Mm -hmm. I'm a boomer. I say this on Twitter often. I am a selfish boomer. I have pulled forward all the gains that should be accruing to my children because I'm so soft <laughs> that I can't deal with the problems in the here and now. And I have to pull forward their gains. Every single boomer out there is a disgrace. Okay. A selfish, greedy disgrace. And I'm trying to fix that. You know, here's my, my thesis. First of all, Bitcoin's only 13 years old. Okay. Secondly, the price has gone down from its all time highs, but one year ago was when it was at the current price. So remove one year and all of a sudden we're at one. This is a 20 year trade. Okay. This is not about a one year. This is insurance over the next lifetime of myself and my children. Don't evaluate an insurance policy on a quarter to quarter basis accumulate your insurance so that in the event that the central bank loses control, you have insurance. I do not want the US to lose control of the system. It's going to happen, but I hope over time we will have a parallel system called Bitcoin developed, which will absorb the law, the, the, the volatility and loss of the traditional financial markets. It's the only solution. Again, I'm trying to tell you it's impossible. Volcker had the ability to do that because the outstanding debt of the United States wasn't at a point where it would bankrupt itself by raising rates that high. So Volcker, so you you called it, you, I think you said it was a 39 year bond bull market. Guess what? I've been trading for 35 of those 39 years. I'm only have seen one thing, interest rates going from 14% down to under 1%. I could have closed my eyes put all my money in long-term treasury bonds 40 years ago, and then fast forwarded the clock and come and cashed out now and say, hey, look, I make 25% annualized just because I went into bonds. Mm -hmm. But what should have equities have done over that period? They should have done better, yes, because they're more risky. Again, they rank below, they rank lower in the capital structure. Last week, long bonds in the US lost 10% of their value. Okay, the coupon on that bond is 2%. The annual coupon on that bond is 2%. It lost five years of return mm -hmm. in one week. And while they can't do it, they can pretend like Jay Powell is still leaking through Goldman Sachs that there's gonna be four to five interest rate hikes by a certain period of time. I'm calling BS on that, okay? but. The market can believe FOSS or they can believe Jay Powell. Who do you think they're going to believe in the short term? I know I'm right wow. in the wrong, in the long term, but in the short run, they're going to believe Jay Powell. So here's the key. Markets are an ebb and flow of, uh, of risk and return and evaluation. This will work itself out, but it's very unlikely in my opinion. In fact, impossible, but I have to say unlikely because you're never 100% certain on that side that the coupon on the bond will ever exceed the 7% inflation rate that we are currently experiencing, which means you're guaranteed to lose money after inflation because then they have to pay interest coupons of 10% on a debt burden it is already too big. So then your, your, your debt burden is expanding at 10% annually just because of the coupon on the bond. Impossible. Absolutely mathematically impossible. Unless you want the USA to default, which I don't. I wish that I could get into Pierre Poilievre's head to tell him to convince the Bank of Canada to do that. I want Canada to be the next El Salvador. People forget when you live in the United States, you guys live in a bit of a bubble. Like Argentina, the country of Argentina, which is a G20 country, has defaulted four times in my career. Four times. Who in their right mind lends money to, D uh, to Argentina again? Well, stupid pension funds that say, this time it's gonna be different. Mm -hmm. Okay, the USA will be the last country in the world to default, but the USA will default as well. I hope it takes a long time because I have three kids and yeah. I need to help get a parallel system in place mm -hmm. so that when that happens or when the world realizes that a bond contract is not worth the paper yeah. it's written on, 
they have another alternative called Bitcoin. It will take time for money managers to understand the beauty of Bitcoin, much yeah. like it took me. Like, again, I was skeptical. Yep. I have not stopped researching Bitcoin since five years ago when I first discovered it. And every single day, I find stuff that makes me more uh, convinced that it is the solution. Not, in, uh, not you know, with without or with due mention to people like yourself and younger uh, guys like Marty Bent and, and people who are out there telling the truth. And then there's some old guys like Lawrence Lepard and, and uh, you know, an old gold bug who has admitted, unlike Peter Schiff, who is conflicted, Lawrence Lepard was a gold bug and admits that Bitcoin is the better solution than gold. So this is only 13 years old. It's gonna take time for people to open their statements and go, what happened to the safe thing I thought was a bond? It's currently marked down 20%. I mean, last le week it lost 10%. Mm -hmm. Is it crazy to think you could lose another 10% on something that's supposed to be safe? Mm -hmm. So what is Bitcoin? In my opinion, Bitcoin is insurance. It's actually you're purchasing insurance on the fallibility of an entity. In 2008, people were purchasing the insurance on things like Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. Who are they now going to purchase insurance on? Countries. And exactly. that is my opinion that Bitcoin is the perfect insurance policy. And by the way, there's no counterparty risk. You don't have to go to an insurance company to claim your insurance policy because the chances are that insurance company will be out of business, much like all other financial institutions. You have this beautiful insurance policy that has no time decay, right? Because there's no contract on, on Bitcoin. It's the world's most secure computer network. It's digital energy. Oh, and by the way, oil and natural gas will be priced in Bitcoin someday. And when that happens, the USA loses reserve currency status but more importantly, U.S. Treasury bonds lose reserve asset status and Bitcoin becomes the global reserve asset of the world.